Conflict. Touched on the injuries at Raonic's head this year. Let me remind you, folks, withdrew from Delray Beach, had a, a back injury there. Madrid, Rome, Roland Garros, it was the right knee. Cincinnati, his back. I was just doing a little calculation, Mary. Currently, Raonic is 21 and 10 on the season. It's the worst it's been. I've got to go back to at least 2012. And even then, he's won a lot more matches up until this stage of the year. 27 match wins last year, 28 and 17. 43 in that excellent year that he had in 2016. So, on average, he's down at least 30% on match wins up until this stage in the season. Just an indication of how much the injuries have hampered him. Clean start for the Canadian. And that is going to be an important component of his game. It's a First game. surplus one. And you can have a look at Ranich's average rally hit points. Now, this is the 2019 season. Those are the yellow balls. But the red balls is historical against Nadal. Remember, he's played against Nadal on nine occasions. You can see how Nadal pushes him behind the baseline in order to hit those shots. It's a big difference, that meter. The ability to take time away from Nadal is a real precious commodity, and if you can do it, you can be successful against him. But if he's pushing you back behind the baseline, very difficult for Raonic to win those baseline Rafael rallies Nadal, when they then ensue. Europe. Sensational. And when he was playing his best tennis in those 2012-2016 seasons, his inside-out forehand is one of the best. His ability to get this one to break the sideline so early is what makes it effective. And of course, a very effective pattern of play when you're playing against Nadal. School there, Mary. Even though it's done with modern day equipment, the old slice and come in down the line. You're a southpaw, aren't you? I, I am such a lefty. Yes, in every, in, in everything that that entails. Got a question for you after this one. Does 
left in us help in our sport. There's another one, of course, Connors, so many of the greats of the game. I mean, can you put a percentage on it for me if all things being equal, Nadal was a right-hander or McEnroe was a right-hander? Labor. Labor, Labor, exactly. Martino, yeah. <laughs> There's only 10% only of us, right? In the world. That's the population, so. Yeah. Rafa's family, Carlos Moya, gave an interview after the U.S. Open and said this family was never more nervous than watching Rafa yes. in the U.S. Open final. Wow. Even his, his girlfriend was just his fiancée. Mm -hmm. They're going to be married at the end of the year. She was never more anxious, more animated, yes. right? Jumping up and down, they watching they Rafa. They the bag, didn't they? Oh. Two sets to love up. Finally beating Daniel Medvedev, number 19. He said for him, Moya, it was the hardest thing for him to ever watch. How this man just kept coming back. Yeah, gave Rafa a taste of his own medicine. to see if Roger Federer spends as much time on changeovers as Rafa Nadal did in Roger's win earlier today against Nikirios. This man clearly, we're playing in Geneva. And this is Roger's home country. He is the heart of Team Europe. But if that's true, then Rafa Nadal is the lungs of it. He has breathed for me personally more life into these first two days of Labor Cup than anybody. His moments coaching, his great friend and rival. Mm -hmm. Special. 50 love. Since you mentioned Daniel Medvedev, honorable shout out to the Russian who's in a final again this week, Mary. St. Petersburg. Yep. I want to say that's five in a row now. Washington, Canada, Cincy, and US Open prior to the St. Pete final. Hopefully we'll see him here next year. It's an incredible serve. It's so repetitive. It's so easy, the power. 30 love. Love the rotation of the left shoulder, great knee bend, perfect trophy position, and stays so upright on contact, maximizing his height. Dull there, just beaten for pace. Break points 
team world has had already this weekend and haven't converted on because you know, I just get the feeling that that might be one of the few chances that Raonic gets the opening game on Nadal serve has him love 40 and once Nadal gets his teeth into a match very tough to break down that finger right up the, the grip it's very old school from Milos First night match. Labor Cup. Night two. Nice clean tennis from both of them so far. First time Nadal served, he was down love 40 and figured out a way to get out of it. Does a lot of work to hit that forehand so cleanly, doesn't he? Some nice spacing in his body from the ball. He really has got good footwork around the ball in order to get that spacing correct, Mary. Full out sprint from A to B. He's, he wouldn't be one of my top three of the big guys. Those taller than six foot four. Good guys like Del Potro who move exceptionally well, Thomas Burdick before he had his injuries. Incredible mover. Marin Cilic moves very well for one of the big guys. You're going to mention Daniel Medvedev, aren't you? Of course we are. <laughs> Saving the best to last. That's a good returning early doors from Team World here. Got to make a count, though. Can't let all these Break points come and go, half chances, sooner or later they've got to make the most of them.
More break points to come. And we mentioned that it wouldn't be in the best at converting 15. up until this point. Team World have had 41 break points, but only converted on 11. They've got another two bites set the cherry. for five now on break points. Yes. 11 out of 43 converted this weekend. Hard. You got to do a little extra to stay behind the, those lefty shots. Mm -hmm. you know, it's grasping a bit on the wide ones. He'll get used to that. He should. He better. Nadal, if you are pulled wide on the back end, you've got to be careful about going down the line. Back hard, deep cross court. It's often effective. We've seen Medvedev have a lot of success doing it. Novak Djokovic wrote the blueprint for playing against him with that pattern of play. You've got to choose your moments wisely as to when to take your backhand down the line to his. work on that Nadal ball. You've got to do more with your feet than you think. Yeah. Just knocks you back. You saw the Hawkeye graphic that we showed you earlier. It pushes Ramage further back than anyone else on tour. When he's up against Rafa. That is large part due to the spin that he imparts on the ball. Yeah, 
so many great qualities, this guy, but... Two games on. I'm not sure. I can't wait to hear which, which one you pick. Yeah. <laughs> there are so many, but his decision-making on every shot is so good. So good. He very rarely chooses the wrong shot. Now, I don't know if that trumps his physicality or his mentality on the court, but to always give your opponent the toughest shot to hit if you want to win the point, it is such a great skill. of defense from Raonic. Because Nadal is so good out of his backhand corner, dictating proceedings, loves it. Let's go Rogers, again. Roger telling him it's okay. <laughs> And that's his daily banger, that one. 215. He can he can do it all day long at that pace. He's still got a bit of extra mustard if he needs it. Just a little bit above his average today of 219 kilometers an hour with the first serve. It's his fifth ace. Papa hasn't come near getting a break point against Raonic yet. You did it, but you know, third times just make sure you do occasional serve volley so that you know when you need it too. Yeah. Sorry, Nick. Sorry, Jack. Um, how how proud were you of his performance today? It was a tough loss, huh? Yeah, he, he fought so hard. Um, obviously, like we said, you're playing for more than yourself out here, so you're gonna always leave it on the line. Um, super proud. Super proud of the way he played. Roger came up with some Roger-like stuff. I felt like in the third set tiebreak and. Honestly, it was one of those you just say too good, and they say he came up with some incredible stuff. But yeah, Nick Nick battled uh, super hard. We're all we're all proud of him. Great start from Milos as well. I, he's hitting the ball. I think he's hitting the ball so clean. He's seen it big. He's had obviously had some chances. It'd be nice to get one of those the way he's serving right now. So hopefully, just keep this level up and um, yeah, see what happens. Good luck to team. Well, good luck to you guys tonight. Appreciate yeah. it. And that short forehand, you gotta you, know, you guys you gotta you gotta go after it. You can't just dive. Yeah, accelerate. Yeah, whatever side you decide to go. But, you know, that shot, I think you hit it pretty well. It's like slightly, you know, in front. That's it. Come on. Come on. Time. Nothing but encouragement from John McEnroe to Milos Raonic. He even said that on Milos's serving games, he should throw in the occasional serve and volley, which uh, helped Milos have such a great grass court season with John at his side a few summers back. John told him, impose yourself at the net. Get yourself up there. Nadal serving at just 44%.
grounded, serving at 77%. Law 15. What about the serve durations? Nadal averaging just over six minutes for each of his service games. Roundage, two minutes. I don't know which one I like, but I know which one I generally was part of. to come in, his finishing volleys, some of the best in the business. Yeah, I don't mind this play from the big unit that is Raonic, but that is an opposing figure at the net. Just miss it on the first volley there, just putting him in a, a compromised position. serving at 39%. And in the sixth game of this match, he struck just one winner. And that was his fifth unforced error. He keeps going at Raonic's, oh, he switched it up. First time he's gone to his forehand. And still wins the point. Yes. what I'm talking about. Takes up a lot of space in the forecourt.
Got him. Big time play once again when the chips are down. This guy's so clutch. Juice. Sumptuous when it matters most. Rafa's first ace. Advantage, Team Europe. Some seriously good movement from the big fella. Because Nadal is so good at lobbing over the backhand side of opponents. He's got to move backwards and sideways. And that's a compromised position there. To get that sort of pop, Mary, you know how dif difficult that is. He does both. Another difficult serving game for Rafa Nadal. Brownich now 0 for 7. Break points. That's not any great bats of Advantage, Team Europe. Every time I play this guy, does the same to me. I have all these break points, and I can never convert. Yes. Tremendous from both of them. But Roundage gets the last word. Team Europe seeing red. Team World looking good. Uh, no, Another chance now, to break point. this guy. Yeah, start to finish. So that's not an easy volley with Nadal bearing down on you. And the Spaniard first to applaud the quality of that volley. Yeah. He's beautifully taught Roundage. And he's had a lot of injuries, so he's been able to truly work on his form. And why he keeps getting injured. But Nadal's going to go backhand Juice. all night long, isn't he? When he's looking for that important point. And that's why the matchup against Djokovic is a difficult one for him, because. Exactly. He's got such a good backhand return. He's got such a good return in general, but in particular the backhand return. Nadal just requesting a, a white towel. One that's a little older. Sweating profusely out here. Advantage. 33 years old and less than two weeks after he won his 19th major in New York. And he's back out here. And they said it sort of jokingly, but when I asked Rafa and Roger if there was ever some indecision about whether he would show up in Geneva to play here, mm -hmm. well, there's a little conversation. <laughs> but Rafa kept his commitment.
game. Team Europe. It took a while, but another hold. Three games old. See just the best being resilient. You see the greatest competitor our sport has ever seen. He's certainly got to be among the fistful you would name first. Yep. Want somebody to play for your life. Didn't know how they were going to wake up in, in the morning. And again, because of all the injuries he's suffered through the last couple of years, especially. Yep. And with all the power and pace that he's now facing, there's this continuing sense of renewal in his game. Yeah. And he just keeps trying to improve. Yeah. And his ability just to deal with the hardship and then come back stronger. coach of the last couple of years and his childhood friend, Carlos Moya, who says what the whole team tries to teach Rob is more useful things. We try to make him more aggressive as the years go on. The points and matches should be shorter. Let's Moya says it's not easy to change and evolve as he has, but he's not 20 years old anymore and fresh like back in the day. He says he, Rafa understands the game better now than he ever has. He also said something interesting, Robbie, about Rafa's game. He says, we have lost some weapons and gained other ones. Mm -hmm. Rafa changing his core position on these returns. <laughs> Step back a bit more, and Roger Love the said of this court, this dramatic black court, the only one of its kind, that he gave it all this kind of room. He said it with a smile, yep, because he wanted Rafa to have plenty of space. <laughs> and a little closer now. State hit. 15 Yeah, the sound it made when it came off his racket, that thudding sound when the acceleration through the ball is good. He's got close to 200 pounds of prime Canadian beef behind that one. In order to hit that inside out forehand, he needed a bit more there. 15 14. Mr. Persistent, Mr. Resilient finds a way so often. He's had to fight off eight break points on his own serve. He 
here's his first. serve to the backhand. It's normally his solid side. You won't get too much change out of those second serve returns usually. And that is a bonus for Raonic. to put a second serve in play and you can understand why it's so important to him because the first serves unreturned is a whopping 82 percent for Raonic, 26 for Rafa. Sebastian's not happy, not used to seeing that from his boy. well just to stay on this point a little bit of lady luck yes that's why you spend hours and hours doing all your physical conditioning so you give yourself a chance at making that shot and at the end of the range there's not many that are much better than him Team World uh, challenging the call on the left far sideline. The ball's got fault. That ball is wide and roundage just one of eight in first serves in this game. to the home team, Team Europe. On your serve a little bit, you're going down very quickly with the right yeah, arm. Yeah. You, know, you, have, you have to lay a little, going. little bit longer, that's when you get the ball. I, okay. I feel that the ball is going low. Yes. At the yes. end, the last yes. game is a little bit better. Little bit better. You had one over there. When you saw yeah. it right there, that you really reached up to, you know? Yeah. It's just a little bit more stretch but in the right arm than you go, you know? I don't have to serve to the net, you know, I have to serve wide, uh, long. Exactly. That's the goal. Exactly. Here we go. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Give That from the vice captain, Thomas Enkvis. Rafa agreeing immediately, Rafa. He's got to get more elevation. Yeah, just keep that right shoulder up when he's making contact with the serve. Don't pull down on it. That's what you call giving blood, sweat, and tears. Oh, I've got a pat, pat. A couple of bananas. Rafa getting some advice from Thomas Inkvist. On this last changeover, McEnroe 
asking for a handful of bananas for Roundage. And Rafa immediately agreeing with the vice captain about what he's doing wrong on his serve. Yeah, just dropping that right shoulder and wants him to stay up a little longer. The, the tossing arm. Tell you what, I've, I've been around long enough to follow Rafa Nadal's entire career. Yep. He's never walked off a court confused and befuddled about why he's lost a match or won one. Afternoon match today when Federer was losing to Kyrgios. He had dropped the first set, and at 4 5 in the second, Rafa came over and coached Roger, and he won the next three games. He explained he had looked at the numbers and said, When you're under five shots, you're winning those points. Suggested that Roger play points shorter, and that's just what happened. And he ended up winning. 15. And afterwards, Roger said of Rafa and his brain pan, we did it together. He said, I really enjoy his clarity and his advice. He said he got the same thing when Rafa played Labor Cup for the first time in Prague. The idea of balance, when to be aggressive, when to defend. He said he's a great problem solution finder. <laughs> that he shares it so freely, yes. so openly with one of the great rivals he will ever have. There's something to watch. One more thing, Roger. Wow, nice little catch there. said Rafa's not afraid of changing tax tactics, even winning tactics, if he knows he's got to do something different. him any butterflies. I think he, he gives him a sense of steely resolve. Nothing to be nervous about. Even when he was eight break points down, Roger's been there and done that. He's had a couple of shirts with um, quotes on this week. One of the ones we saw on Day one was where dreamers become doers. Like it. was saying about you know when Nadal comes off uh, the match court he's, he's never befuddled about what happened out there but reminds me a little bit about Jimmy Connors uh, who said he had never lost a tennis match 
he just ran out of time. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. That was so Jimmy, wasn't it? I think he, I think he meant it. Yeah. out here is Nadal didn't quite get hold of that last forehand knows he's not playing his best tennis but the scoreboard wouldn't give you any indication of that he's got to hang on to his deal here just give himself one more chance to have a crack at Nadal's serve Hit that ball on the pinnacle of its bounce. That enables him to hit down on the shot. Generate a bit more pace through the court. First double fault after his sixth ace. He's serving in the low 50s now, roundage. Nadal has bumped up his server's percentage to the mid 50s. Been the measure of this match so far. Wow. Going after that smash while still on the run. Never stops coming at you, does he? Oh, man. It's just like a tsunami size <laughs> wave of attack. It's not as easy as it looks, and it gives Team Europe a set point. Ravich will have to sit down knowing that he had eight chances to break Nadal. Didn't get one of them. off this shirt the fans will go nuts <laughs> whistles I think he said to to Roger the most unfair set ever and I think we know exactly why because he had no business winning it yet of course 
got to play the big points well. There's such a premium placed on them in our scoring system. That's exactly what Rafa did do. That forehand down the line it was a blazing forehand that we see so often from him. his last 11 singles matches in the doll. He won in Montreal, and of course he won the U.S. Open with plays like that. And now he's halfway to winning his 12th in a row. I'm gonna guess he's gonna take a very long vacation come Monday morning. Tell us a lot since those break points you've got to have a look at. Those are the most important numbers. Adol, two of four. Time. Oh, eight for Raonic. That's really hurts him in the opening stanza. Always highlight the importance of playing the big points well in our sport given the nature of our scoring system. There's not many sports that you can think of where you can actually Second, win more points than your opponent, yet still lose to him. It's because you've got to win the big ones, the break points, the set points. Position. The ball has got so much work on it. it rocks your form when you're trying to control it. You can see he holds his position here. He doesn't go past the middle. Fake and bake. Can't deal with it. Came into this match, Robbie, thinking that Milos Raonic has played too little tennis. Rafa Nadal has played too much. <laughs> Keeps coming. To start set two game. for Rafa. Senior. First game, second set.
Mark Petchy is courtside. Sasha, thanks uh, for taking the time to chat to us. Um, Rafa's done well to dig out that opening set, hasn't he? I think he saved eight break points. Yeah, Milos had a lot of chance in the first uh, few games. I mean, obviously, Rafa is Rafa for a reason, and um, you know, he's, he's been doing well, and um, hopefully keep it up and we can get uh, another win here. You've obviously been on the other side of the court to Rafa. What makes him so difficult to beat? Milos is unbelievably consistent with the serve. He doesn't give you any free points ever, and you really have to kind of dig deep in, in every point that you play. And, and, uh, and, you, and Rafa, just what makes him so tough in those moments? <laughs> Rafa is, you know, he really doesn't give you anything. Uh, he's somebody that is going to try to, if he has a chance, try to win every single point that he can against you. And, um, you know, he's, he's one of the greatest of all time. Sasha, thanks for your time. Good luck for 10 years. Thank you. that he gets caught with a slow ball. 15. Yeah, time to hit the four, and he thought so too. Gets this one down nice and low. Just got his spacing wrong. You can see him looking at his bench with his hands as if to say, what happened there? Believe it. Team World Challenge in the call, right far side. The ball's ball out. And surely, wow, that thing was so short. You wonder how it might even be able to find a piece of the line. There was so much angle on that. For the 
match now. He's only getting every other first serve in. has picked up his serving, hasn't he, Robin? He has, and, and it's interesting where it's been effective. It's actually out wide on both courts. He's winning every point when he goes out wide. On the right of your screen there to round inches four, and of course the lefty swinger out wide on the ad side. He's winning 70% of those points and 100% of the other. So if you want to give him a piece of advice, if you're part of the coaching staff, keep using your out wide serves he hasn't been particularly effective behind that first serve today only winning 60 percent of the points when he lands it that's down from a season average of 76 mary now that's a 16 percent differential if 15. my maths is any good Best problem solvers out there. Watch out when he starts to make that forehand down the line. Always That's a, a tell of his confidence. It really is a barometer of his confidence. Senior. 
be hard to change his mind about who's going to win this, isn't it? 2 1, and it's set up Team Europe. Really good. Come on. To the Thomas Anquist, the first serve percentage has gone up a little bit. It was 57% in the opening set, now up to 64%. In the no, the one when you held that forehand, though, you hit it well. Yeah, but like a lot of time he's able to get to my approaches, which are pretty short. You know, even if it's top spin here, I just got to go for it. Over here. Here. Spanish flag, Robbie and Rafa scheduled to play the doubles coming up as well. Turn around. It's not a bad doubles player either. <laughs> He's got one of those Olympic gold medals that's hanging in his trophy cabinet as a result of winning the Olympic doubles. Alan Tsitsipas playing Kyrgios and Sock. Stefan Tsitsipas playing for the first time in Labor Cup. It's also Roundage's first time. Roundage's first time. Fabio Fonini's first time. Taylor Fritz in that category too. Sock beating Fonini. City Pass taking out Fritz last tonight. Much for once, Rafa didn't have enough revolutions on the ball. First and foremost, Milos Raonic had to take care of his serve. He's now been broken a couple of times. And he's under 50% for serves. Yeah, 
coming into this game, Mary. He had only made six of his last 20 first serves. It's highly unusual for him. Dahl should have done better with that first pass. He knows it. Pays the price for not doing enough with that first forehand. He knows this is an opportunity. So does the monogrammed maestro. Always interesting once a player's hit an ace but it's a lead court how does that affect their decision making when they step up to the line again do they go to the same place have they given away their hand must they change it up nadal's gone another 10 feet back almost now he's gone out of jail This is the one where Nadal should have done a little better. Good gamble though from Raonic. I like the way he closed down the net. is quite subdued in this match. I haven't seen too much from either. Perhaps Europe just expecting Nadal to bring his own energy. Yeah. 
game. Team World. Meanwhile, <laughs> is that Stefano Sisi pass? Yeah, just doing that. Under that towel? Yeah. It is. Left. Getting ready for his doubles. A bit of uh, meditation. Could be asleep, but if you want to say meditation. Sounds better, doesn't it? Well, it's more professional. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Keep in mind, Rafa will finish this match, and then there'll be a bit of a break before he and Tsitsipas take on Kyrgios and Sok. Be here for that one. something in his line. mind, probably doing some visualization. A lot of the best do it. You probably don't know too much about cricket, do you, Mary? No. There's an probably Australian girl not. by the name of Steve Smith, who uh, has pretty much just won the Ashes for the Australians, and he is a massive believer in visualization. Sounds like Bianca Andreescu, the 19-year-old Canadian who won the Open. Visualizing and meditating since she's 12. Mm. Replay points. We're going to have a do over here. In fact, uh, Steve Smith said he struggles to sleep at night during the test matches that he plays because he's visualizing Finish. so long and hard how he's going to bat the next day. Can't go to sleep. But he's the best in the business by a country mile at the moment. Sports, men and women, they speak a lot about the mental side of sport, but how much time do they actually spend practicing it? If you think how many hours they'll spend hitting forehands and backhands, but we always say the mental side of sport is so important. Do you match those hours off the court with mental training like you do on it? I think it's still very much an untapped area in our sport. Rare smash miss from Rafa. 15 touch. The last time Nadal missed a smash, God was a boy. By the way, a couple of changeovers ago, Roger Federer, 20-time Grand Slam champion, brought more white towels over to Rafa to his bench. Whatever it takes, right? <laughs> I guess so. One lefty great watching another. Is this the time? First look to break in this second set. 0 for 8 for the match. Seven of those eight break points down. Rafa went wide. Brownouch okay. gets it. First break of the second set goes to the Canadian. Team World. Team World. Maybe I think then maybe you you go that and first shot. You know. Yeah. Because then he cannot lean on it and just block it. 
and he has to do a little bit more himself, and then you just attack him with the first one. Yeah. And then, of course, you got unlucky yeah. now. This is a, no, 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 no. this is tough. I don't know. And then I think always when you see a chance to come to the net against him, you know, challenge him for a passing shot. Okay. And you're so good at the net. The thing is, I'm content. I'm not trying to serve that strong, and I'm not good at much. Yeah, okay. But, okay. but just, you know, you, you, maybe spin, slice, you know, more like this. Yeah. Like in the old days. <laughs> Absolutely remarkable changeover. That last one, Roger Federer stepping in. Time. Giving some advice to Rafa on his serve. Rafa saying he's, he's lacking a bit of power. And R Roger said, go back to the spin and the slice, like the old days, before he served big. I think Mark Pecci is now down courtside with Roger Federer. Roger, thanks for joining us. Um, it's been obviously great for tennis fans and obviously the team here, I think, to watch you and Rafa interact in terms of coaching as well. Obviously, it helped you a little bit in your match against Nick. He did, yeah. I mean, it's just good confirmation from Rafa. And, and it's not personal. If he's not happy with what I'm doing, I, I'd rather him tell me. I feel like I can handle it, and I feel like anybody of these top guys can handle it. So it's great to have Rafa on the team, of course. Coming back out here to uh, to this uh, arena right now, <laughs> was that my shoelace that you were just pulling for? <laughs> you like the shoe? to untie your oh, shoelace. Right. I can see that. You already said that. Keep going. Um, coming back out here into this arena after the match that you just played, I mean, when you created this concept, did you feel as though you could possibly have a moment like that that was almost equal to a Grand Slam? I'm not sure. In all honesty, I, I hoped and I know that team competition really brings out some incredible emotions. So, of course, I was hoping for that, but did I expect it to be that loud? This well, uh, so much attendance here. I don't know, everybody's so enthusiastic about the event. Everybody only saying the highest of praises. I mean, and it's only year three. Uh, I hope we can really look to some amazing moments in the future, but I'm obviously living the dream right now playing playing here in switzerland right now this weekend of course it was huge for you to, to win to keep the momentum going for team europe did, did rafa say to you that was the most unjust set when he won the opening set you heard that i think we heard that. yeah he said this was the mon most undeserving <laughs> set he's ever won so we take it you know but now it's uh, we're back in a fight and i hope uh, rafa can come back here uh, be great obviously lots of big servers on the tour last question roger Milos, what's what's the hardest thing about his delivery? His concentration, um, you know, point for point, he always delivers. He, he has incredible. Oh. That's great. Yes, come on, Rafa. Um, no, he's got incredible mental capacity. Just love 40, 40, love. It doesn't matter, and you know. 225, 225, and he can do that for five hours, and he's proven that point, and that's why I respect him uh, greatly. His second serve is also one of the best in the game, and that's why he is a top server, top five maybe of all time. Roger, thanks for your time. I'm going to uh, I'm going to leave at 225 and let you focus. Okay, thank you. Fifteen thirty now. After Roger Federer beat Nick Kyrgios, he said the only time he could remember a louder crowd was maybe one time a couple of years ago when he played in Bogota. But he hit a reflex volley against Nick Kyrgios that he said he'd never heard a sound like that. that Roger Federer has done on a day like today when he heard all that noise. 15, 40. He said he had goosebumps.
Nadal breaks for the third time. Damn. Back on serve. Team Europe. A little touch of genius here from Nadal, showing us he's no one-trick pony. So often it's about the power. Three games but he's game. got the deft touch too. Roger said something else to Rafa on that last change. You should come to the net every chance you get. You're so good at the net. What makes him so tough, as much as his hands and his clarity up there, is that he comes in behind such great stuff, doesn't he? Yeah. It's not often you see him have to hit a second or a third volley. Very high for both. And of course, what those high intensity changes allude to. I'll let you know exactly what those 86 refer to after this point. Those are the high intensity changes of direction, Mary. Those types of changes 15. are the ones that place a high load on the lower limb joints. And those are when the players are in dynamic movement and then having to change direction again. 86 for each player in this match so far. So both of them exerting a lot of stress on their lower limbs because of those high intensity changes of direction. out of the corners of the court. I mean, Nadal, one of the best out of the corners, together with Federer and Djokovic. There's a reason why they've been the three dominant forces in our sport of late. It's no coincidence that they're also the three best athletes, Mary. Beautifully, but Robbie, the fact that he's won Roland Garros so many more times than Fortune. anybody else around him means that. That what? When he, how does he move so much better than everyone else on clay? How does he hold the court? How does he slide into an out of his shots so much better? There's never been anyone like him. Mm -hmm. The guy who just stood up and applauded him, Bjorn Borg. He knew his way around the clay court. Yep. Rafa's won twice as many. Let's think about that for a moment. Right there, 18 French Opens. It's astonishing. I mean, maybe Borg could have got to 12 if he didn't retire so early. 25 and a half, I think uh, Bjorn was. He was young. Walked off the court at the US Open. Let's keep in mind, Borg also won Wimbledon five straight times. And 
a time when this, those surface changes were much yep. more dramatic than they are now. I got it. I got it. Three of those overlapped where you want the French to in the same year. I still think that's one of the greatest feats in our sport, Barry. So let me get that, that the second serve for it. Go after that second serve, okay? Raonic for Team World is serving at 52%. And when he's missing that serve, which is all too much, he's only winning 29% of the second serves against Rafa Nadal. He's got some new balls to play with. Checking with the chair on whether he should challenge. The answer was no. That every day of the week. Keeps a good volley is getting the eyes down to the level of the ball. Watch this as he makes contact with this one. Great technique. Step in the left foot. Getting the weight going forward. Could hear the sound again, couldn't you? Left foot, making the stamp as he makes contact with the forehand volley. in there with uh, some polyester string. I think that's the combination I saw. I guess you would have grown up playing with natural gut. Mains and crosses, right? I use a lot of nylon. Did you? <laughs> Last longer. Save, save on the restrings. <laughs> I've still got a couple in my garage. I have you. Is wondering if it's got enough side spin. It's close, but not close enough. Love 15. Oh, he 
just got hold of that one. Love searching. Straight nitro on this backhand return. for Rafa Nadal to break. 14, yeah, this is Rafa at his vintage best. You give him anything that's short and central. Boom! Thanks for coming. Not break, sorry. Game point. On serve. And that does it. Up a set on serve in the second. Doubles to come. On the end of head court, on the second serve, he struggles more when you go far back and return deep and heavy than if you try to go uh, fast on the head court. Yeah, but I don't want to give all the time because then he gets used that on the way. I know, but I don't want to give him every time because then in the important moments, so they, then he knows more what to do. Yeah. But generally speaking, if you go up and heavy, yeah, I know. He's much stronger, more. But I need to feel it. Yeah. yeah I think it's good to know the four and also, right? But it's best for one inside. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Much more. Yeah. Let it go a little yeah. bit. Right? Come on, man. Let's go. Let's do it. How much does Rafa Nadal want to break again, get off this court, and get ready for the doubles with Stefano Tsitsipas? Uh, against Nick Kyrgios and Jack Sock. Ninth ace for Ronich. 15 yeah, It wasn't as big as surf, but the amount of spin that it had on it, that's what did the damage. 
185, well below his first serve average, which is right around 218, 219 kilometers an hour. Interesting previous change events, both Zverev and Nadal was, excuse me, Zverev and Federer were suggesting he should stand deeper to return that second serve. Nadal says he doesn't want to give it away too early on in the game. He wants to save it for the bigger points. Standing up again for a second serve here. Behind in the count. show graphic here that's the sprints 59 for Ranich 53 for Nadal and these are sustained sprints over five and a half meters and why five and a half meters well that's the approximate distance from the center line to the outer tram line as well as the baseline to the surface line so both these guys doing a fair bit of heavy sprinting over five and a half meters. So what we're doing is we're keeping an eye on everything lateral, 15. as well as those up and down the court. first serve percentage up to a healthy 73 in this set. Gorgeous feel. More energy just when he needed it. Okay. It's a great game. Without a six five, it was a good game. We've got a chance at this game. You know it. You know it. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, the audience, man, he tried a drop shot. When you do a forehand one, I'm really being impressed. Often that he's a little heavy handed on the drop shot. Aranich had a de decent look at this one. He didn't quite get the contact right. Thank you. 
I'd almost feel like you're like leaning the other way. I'd go the other way, make it so and then you can step off your back into it. I'm the deuce. Yeah, I'm the deuce. Come on now, come on. First things first, yes sir. Macaroon giving Roundage some ideas about what he could be doing better on his return games, but first he's got to take this to a tie break. Fifth ace of this set, 11 and all. Yeah, it's one thing guessing right. So another thing altogether. Trying to control the volley. So much a rip spin on it. wasn't even close. Rafa knew it. 30 15 to Europe have two challenges remaining. Let's listen. He magisterially just delivers that serve. It's effortless. It's coming out of his shoes at all to hit it at that pace. That's a sweet strike. Of the compact swing. That's how he deals with that sort of pace. That return is served from deep. That's very was liking. Yes.
team world. Tiebreak. It was 13th ace, seventh of this set. Six games on, tiebreak. Both teams receive one additional challenge. Europe. Talk about a guy who's so good at defying the odds. That's what he's going to have to do against Raonic in the tiebreak situations. And this year, Milos has won 70% of the tiebreakers he's played. Again, the spacing so good, so strong out of his backhand corner. That's where he, he's the best at dominating the rally from. Sees the angle so well from that side of the court. two tiebreakers, Mary, that he played against. Raonic, haven't played for a while, Australia, 2017. Shanghai, 
sneaky, sneaky serving volley. We saw him do that against Medvedev in the finals Five, of the US Open. Zero. So very well. That was timely to say the least. something to see. I mean, how tired must this guy be mentally, physically, emotionally? Still coming up with the goods. Still measuring his, his, his drink bottles. His will to win remains undiluted, Mary. Check that out. Every time we see him play, he empties his tank every time. And he does it for his fans every time. And of course, we ourselves rejuvenated. Is Rafa really going to come out in a short while and play doubles? That's what he's supposed to do. He's with Mark Petchy. Rafael, before we get into obviously the match, I just want to say thank you from the bottom of the hearts from all the people here in Geneva around the world. There was a lot of reasons for you not to come to Labour Cup. The fact that you have, thank you very much. It was fantastic of you. Well, no. <laughs> thanks. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you for your words. But honestly, uh, be here for me is a very positive energy. You know, uh, it's amazing to be. Uh, around the great team and the crowd is just uh, unreal every single day. So many, many thanks for the support.
Milos gave you a, a good run for your money in that opening set. You managed to kind of steal it away from him. Yeah, I feel very lucky <laughs> in the first set, honestly. No, I've been, uh, uh, I think, unlucky first set for, for him. I think he deserved that first set for sure. Uh, later in the match, I think I started to play better, a uh, little bit uh, high percentage on the serves, and I started to moving myself a little bit better. No, and at the end, I think I played a very good tiebreak with some good shots. So very happy, no, very happy to help Team Europe to be, I think, 7-3 now. So uh, it's great news for us, and I hope for you too, the crowd that we are in Europe, so you support us that much. So many, many thanks. <laughs> I'm just going to ask you one last question because I know you've got to go off and get ready for your doubles. We're going to get more of you tonight. Bit of a competition to see who's the better coach on Team Europe at the moment, yourself or Roger. You've both been helping each other out. At the moment, I think everybody feels you're going to make a better coach. Oh, yeah, much better. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I think it's a, it's a great team that everybody tries to help each other and uh, it's a great team spirit. That's why uh, we were able to, to achieve two Labour's Cups, uh, the two previous editions. And uh, yeah, remain a lot of work to do. So we need to be together. We need to, to help each other. Uh, and we have uh, great coaches, Bjorn and Thomas and the rest of the team is supporting very much. So many thanks. Thank you. Rafa, thanks. Congratulations. Thank you very much. US Open champion uh, Rafa Nadal scored another win uh, for Team uh, Europe, beating uh, Milos Raonic in two sets, 6-3, six, 7-6. Uh, six. As he leaves the course, he better gets ready because he has to be out there shortly again. Tomorrow.